Some people get solar purely for environmental reasons, and others do it for financial returns. I'm guessing most people, including myself, try to strike a balance between the two. If the financing matters to you, I've got a very simple method to track your progress towards payback. And that might be sooner than you think. Hi, I'm Gary, and welcome back to my channel, Gary Does Solar. We're all short on time, and getting heavy with spreadsheets to work out payback on a solar and battery installation isn't everyone's cup of tea. But I think I've designed a method that is super easy to understand and use, and one that should work for just about everyone. I'll talk you through the rationale, show you how I built the method, and then I'll show you the method in action using data from my own solar installation. OK, let's get started. So what is it we're trying to do? We want to track how much you spent on your solar installation, together with how much you're paying now on your electricity bills, against what you would have been paying had you not invested in solar. Looking at this graphically, here's what you would be paying without solar. For the moment, we'll assume it's the same every year with no inflationary impact. And because you made an investment into solar, there was a large upfront cost in the first year but hopefully this has resulted in a decreased annual electricity bill. And when the difference in the annual bill over the year adds up to the investment you've made, you reach the break-even point, or payback as many people like to call it. For a chart like this, the calculation would be relatively easy, but life's never that simple. The price of electricity could go down, and of course over time it will inevitably go up with inflation. And you may spend more on your installation at some point, either to improve or repair it. A better way to look at things, then, is cumulative spending. Let me show you what I mean with this line chart. The red curve represents the cumulative cost of your electricity over the next few years. And again, for the moment, we'll assume it's the same cost every year. The green line represents the cumulative cost with a solar installation. You can see there's an immediate upfront investment in the first year, followed by a shallower sloping line, representing cheaper electricity bills from then on. Now where these two lines meet is the break-even point, in this case eight and a half years. But even before we get there, we can visually estimate when that payback will be. And of course beyond that point, because installation costs are now covered, the difference between the two lines represent the cumulative profit. Let's now look at what this chart might look like in reality, including the effects of lower or higher energy prices, inflation, and any additional investment required over time. It's a bit more complex, but it's still possible to get a rough idea of when the payback will be as the years go by. Now you might be wondering why the green line is going down at one point instead of up. This is because with the right energy provider tariff, you could end up not just reducing your bills to zero, but actually earning a credit over the year. And I'll be able to show you that in practice shortly when we look at my own data. By the way, if you're getting a lot from these videos, please do like and subscribe. And remember to hit that bell icon as well so you don't miss what I'm working on next. There are a couple of other ways you can support this channel as well. I've got a Patreon that's very low cost and gives you access to some great utilities. And if you're in the UK, I always recommend Octopus for your energy supply. And switching to them means we both get £50. A massive thank you to all my Patreon members and to everyone who's already used my Octopus referral code. OK, so that's the approach. Let's put it all into practice now. And for this, we'll be using a spreadsheet. Now, don't worry if you're not too handy with spreadsheets. It's all pretty straightforward, and I'm going to take you through it step by step. We'll start here. I've created three columns. The first column is the month since your solar installation date. And anywhere that you can see red text is where you can enter your own values. So we can set this to, say, January 2020. Next to that is an area where we can enter the costs of having a solar installation. The second column is for any time you spend money on your solar installation. And of course, in the first month, that will be the total upfront cost, which will be thousands of pounds, dollars or euros. Let's say the initial cost was £10,000. The third column is then the actual monthly cost for your electricity now that you have a solar installation. And you can easily get these costs by looking at the bills you receive from your energy supplier. Now, depending on your energy supplier, you might get a single bill each month, totaling both imported electricity and any payments for electricity you exported that month, 
With my supplier, Octopus Energy, I get various bills throughout the month, separating all these things out. So just add up whatever bills you receive in any given month and then enter the total. In our example here, I've created a typical scenario where the bills are zero in the summer and higher in the winter. Now this next column automatically converts all those costs into a cumulative cost over time and we'll be using this later on to draw a chart. Now here you can enter details on what your costs would have been if you didn't have a solar installation. And the next column then is quite important. It's the home usage across each month. Now this is quite different from the energy that you import from the grid because a lot of the time your home appliances will be powered by your solar panels or by your battery. So to get this information you'll need to log into your inverter portal. I've got a Give Energy Inverter and when I log into my portal I'm able to create a report like this. And here in the report I can see the actual home usage which is separated out from the solar generation and battery charging and discharging. You simply write all these values into the appropriate months of your spreadsheet here. For simplicity in our example we'll assume the home usage was 350 kilowatt hours every month. The next two columns then are the cost that you would have paid for that electricity had you not had solar. Now remember that with solar you're likely to be on a special smart tariff, but without solar you'll instead be on a standard tariff with fixed daily cost. Enter both the cost per kilowatt hour and also any fixed cost per day. In the UK this is called a standing charge. In our example here we'll use 30 pence and 50 pence respectively. The next column is a formula that calculates the electricity cost for each month based on the home usage, the cost per kilowatt hour and any fixed daily cost. Now the more astute of you might question why this cost is not the same for each month given all the values on the left are the same. And this is simply because each month has a different number of days which I take account in the formula above. Finally then, just like the green box, all these costs are converted into a cumulative cost over time ready for the chart. And just before I show you the chart, I've added in one extra column, which is the difference between the two cumulative costs. And as you can see, this value decreases over time. And when it gets to zero, that's your break even point, or when your investment has been paid back. OK, let's look at the chart then. You can see the green line representing the cumulative costs with solar. It jumps immediately to £10,000 in the first month, then steadily increases after that but it's hard to see that at the moment because we only have the first year's data. And at the bottom is the red line representing the cumulative costs without solar. The slope of this line is higher, and just by looking at the chart you could make a guess at when the payback point will be, perhaps around 2027 or 2028. Let's add more data to the spreadsheet so we can see what the lines will look like eventually. Now you can see the lines crossing at around the beginning of 2028. And if we scroll down through the data, concentrating on the cumulative cost difference, we can see that decreasing over time, eventually going negative in February 2028. At this point, your solar installation has paid for itself and is now making money for you. Now, it might be that you have to spend some more money on your installation at some point, perhaps to repair a faulty unit or something not covered by the warranty. For example, let's add an extra £1,000 paid in May 2021. You can see the effect on the green line in the chart. What I'd like to show you now is the same spreadsheet but this time with my own data. My installation was installed at the end of March last year so I now have a year's worth of data. And if you remember in the UK it was possibly the worst time to buy a solar installation given the high prices both for equipment and labour. But how could I run a solar YouTube channel and not have my own solar setup? I paid £20,000 for my system. And if you're interested to know more about that, I've made a detailed video for my Patreon members that you can watch. Looking at the chart then, the red line is going up as expected, but the green line looks like it's coming down. And if we look over to the actual electricity costs over the year, it appears a little erratic, but many of the bills were negative, meaning I was getting paid instead of having to pay given all the export I achieved, and that was using the Octopus Flux tariff I was on. Another great reason to switch to Octopus Energy, by the way. Then, if we look over to the cumulative cost difference, you can see that we are down at around £17,654 against an original investment of £20,000. That's a whopping £2,346 saved on electricity during the first year. If that's not a reason to go solar, I don't know what is. 
From this, I'm estimating a payback in around eight and a half years. And if you're thinking about buying now, prices have come down a lot from what I paid, so your payback will likely be even sooner than mine. I believe this is the easiest method for anyone to track their solar payback period, and so I encourage you to download and play with the spreadsheet. I've placed a link to it in the video description. And I'm sure you can improve on what I've done as well. For example, if you have a heat pump or an EV, how could that be incorporated? I don't have either of these yet myself, but if I did, I might want to keep the cost analysis on those separate. After all, they're both replacing fossil fuel costs, gas and petrol, which would have to be taken into account. But how do you think they should be handled? Let me know in the comments. And if anyone does improve on what I've done here, or if you have a better method, please email me your work to me at garydoesolar.com and I'll include it on the same page for others to try out. Finally then, now that I have a full year's worth of data for my own solar installation, I recently collaborated with Dan EV Solar to see what the differences were in solar generation over the year between his east-west arrays and my south-facing array. Check out Dan's video here. It's an interesting analysis and I've placed a link to it in the description. Thanks for watching. I hope this video is useful and please don't forget to like and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot. Until next time then.